How's it going? Welcome back to the shop. Today I wanted to do a quick follow-up um, on the last video, the grinder tool rest that I made, and talk a little bit about cape chisels. I feel like they're an underappreciated and, and kind of forgotten piece of, uh, of tooling around the shop, and they're really handy, especially if you don't have a mill like I do. I do have a shaper, but a lot of people don't even have shapers. So if you're coming to a problem where you need to cut a slot you know, through a piece of material like that, or you know, cut a keyway, and we'll cut one a little bit later, I think a cape chisel is a really great tool for that. Before mills, this was the tool for that. So you can see that there's a thin spot right here, thinner than the cutting bit. Same here. And this is left wide just for support. But the reason that is, is that you know if you're cutting a slot in something, once you cut all the way through, that thin spot allows the chisel just to be removed very easily. It doesn't bind up. You know, like a normal cold chisel would bind the further and further you get in there and something thin like this it might spread this web apart. You don't want that. So let's talk a little bit more about the cold chisel and I'll, I'll show you cutting a keyway. Okay, so as an example I have some half inch material in here, just mild steel. And I'll use the quarter inch chisel that I use to cut the tool rest. And the idea here is that, you know, because this is flat and the top of this is round, you know, it's only going to cut in the very center. So I want to cut deep enough um, in the first couple passes. I'm going to make light passes, make sure they're straight down the bar. But I want to cut deep enough uh, to the point where these corners start to bite into the material. And at that point, you know, the cut will kind of be self-guiding. So I'll try to get you in a good position where I can cut and you can see. And uh, we'll cut this out and you can see how it works. Okay, hopefully you can see that. If you can't, just yell out and I'll hear you and then I can change the camera. This first pass, you know, the chisel wants to skate side to side because those corners haven't bitten in yet. So I'm just going slow, and if the chisel rattles, I take the time to put it right back on center. Okay, so there's the first pass, kind of flattened off. You could also do that with a file, I guess. I don't know, I'm not an expert. This is just how I do this. And the three things you want to keep in in track are sort of this angle, right? That's the angle of the bite of the chisel. So like this, you're going to cut deeper into the metal and you're probably going to get stopped. You need more force to move forward. Like this, you're going to take a lighter chip, but you might pop the chip and fly out of the cut. So you have to keep that in mind. You also want to keep in track this angle, right? Because you don't want to veer off the shaft. You want to keep down the center line of the shaft, whatever you're cutting. And that goes for this, right? So if you want to go down the center of that, you can stand there. So a scribe line might help you with that. And then there's also the roll angle of the chisel, sort of like this. So on something that's round like this, it's more of a problem. On flat bar, it's not a problem. But if you tilt the chisel up like this, you have a tendency to go down this slope and sort of veer off to my right. On the same uh, idea, if you tilt the chisel like this, you're going to fall down this slope. right? So you need to keep it tilted in the center and also angled right on center. And then you adjust your cut like that. Make sense? Clear as mud? Great. It always feels good when you get that nice big chip. And my corners are just starting to cut now, so I'm going to be careful. And you can use the white metal to sort of guide you, see where you've cut before, keep you honest. Nice. 
So yeah, I can start to feel the edge of the chisel are cutting. I'm cutting in more on this side. Oops, sorry. Okay. Try and get you in closer. See those ridges in there? That means I'm cutting on both corners, and it's going to get a whole lot easier from here on out. So, where are you? I think you get the idea. Cut pretty deep. And it's relatively easy, even with a small shaft, to stay on center. So you can imagine with a bigger shaft, you know, you can figure out how to get that on center with a couple of scribe lines. This is one I already did, just for practice. Where are you? I'm working backwards, sorry. There you go. So yeah, a little cleanup of the file to take the burrs off the corners. You can even do it with the chisel if you're feeling fancy or your work is particularly dirty. But um, yeah, there you go. Cape chisel. It's a super useful tool. And if you saw my previous video, you know that it's pretty easy to make one of these. Uh, you can make them any width you want, and you can build your tolerance into that. So if you want a quarter inch slot, you can do this a little shy of quarter inch and then just file it to your dimension. Go as slow as you want. So I hope you enjoyed that, hope you learned something, and uh, I hope you incorporate cape chisels into your uh, your making, your machining. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.